uh, a great and great influential personality uh, yes richard p finman a great teacher who introduced the scientific world with uh, uh, with the new branch of uh, quantum electrodynamics and uh, were also awarded with the nobel prize for introducing the scientific world with the finman diagrams in the field of quantum electrodynamics a very punctual person who firmly believed that the first principle is that you should not fool yourself because you are the easiest one to want to fool even bill gates uh, bill gates has mentioned that i i regret for not having this kind of uh, exceptional teacher in my life also uh, richard p feynman we, we all all uh, richard p feynman for his great contribution in the scientific world uh, we all uh, we all are very very uh, few of us are aware about the uh, life, life characteristic of richard p feynman uh, even even honestly i was not aware about his life characteristic before this i i just have googled few things about him so but we are privileged that we have great by among us to introduce us about him and uh, his contributions to the scientific world but before he start i want to request mr bai to introduce us about great uh, bai yes mr bai thank you so hi everyone you, uh, lots and lots of familiar faces it look like uh, look Yes, thank you very much, Mithal, for this wonderful uh, welcome speech. And uh, good afternoon, everyone. Looks like so many known faces in the audience. Uh, we are very, very privileged to have you all. But let me start by introducing Krith. Uh, before starting, that I should say that I feel myself privileged to introduce Krith. He has done his B.Sc. from Delhi University, M.Sc. from Indian Institute of Technology, Guwahati, and these are his. professional introductions i am not very much interested in that what i am interested is what i have seen in him so on the very first day of my college of msc i went into the class and i saw a guy walking around wearing a white t-shirt with a sentence written on it that the first principle is you must not fool yourself and you are the easiest one to be fooled and that guy was krit in on the first day i realized that there is something with this guy he knows richard pifenman he knows something about him then only you can actually be courageous enough to wear the t-shirt of him <laughs> and i still remember the last day of my first semester that is after finishing all my exams of first semester i went to the city guwahati city and i met this guy again at the city and he was the one telling me that uh, in this exams i have not studied i watched the lectures of leonard susskind so this was that guy uh, who actually inspired me throughout my journey we discussed many ideas about science and discovery and i feel that he is one of the best teachers i could i could have seen in my entire life so thank you very much krit for accepting this invitation of talking among all of us and i still remember one thing that you told me that we all say that electron is a wave but where do we use it and you said this small property of electron being a wave is used extensively in electron microscopes and we can see those things which are which are we not we, we are not able to see those with our naked eyes that was my first revelation about the world that yes we are doing physics we are doing science but it is so much useful in technology as well it is so much useful in expanding our vision about the universe and you were the one opening my eyes for that so thank you krith and i would really request you to please start ahead with your talk uh, please krith thank you okay uh, thank you mr for this lovely introduction uh, you think highly of me and uh, so uh, so i before begin before i begin i want to ask all of you uh, can you see uh, my picture clearly yes sir and uh, what about my audio is it clear yes very good now uh, so i brought some note just to be careful with what i say so let me begin by uh, uh thanking mr nisar for this uh, starting this initiative of project bhagwati it's a wonderful initiative and uh, also 
for inviting me to give this talk. So thank you, Mr. Bhai, once again. And uh, now, let me share my screen so that uh, you guys can see the PPT that I have prepared. So, so can you guys see my screen? Yes, sir. Yeah. Just call me Krip. I'm no sir. I'm no sir. Okay, so, uh, yeah. So, uh, 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 can you guys see the full screen and the things that is written on it? Just uh, to make sure. Yes. Okay. So, okay. Now. Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt, Krip. Uh, but you can just click on hide on that uh, meet.google.com and share your screen. It ha, is ha. blocking yes, yes, yes. yes. Thank you. Thank you. You can start. Yeah. So this uh, this talk, the pleasure of finding things out. This talk has an interesting history. And before starting, I would like to uh, say a few things about how this talk got uh, how this talk came into existence and uh, and what happened. So. But before uh, begin, let me uh, caution you by telling that English is not my first language, and I'm not I'm not a native speaker of English, so I make some grammatical mistake here and then, here and there. So if I do it, pardon me for that. Okay. So the story is uh, one day I was working in my room in Guwahati, and uh, Nisar came in with uh, with few friends into my room and we started uh, talking about physics in general and uh, we went in to talk about uh, uh, quantum aerodynamics and somehow that conversation got into the uh, discussion about Richard Feynman and uh, at that time I was uh, I knew a few stories about Feynman so I started telling them uh, who Feynman is and how he what kind of science he did and all that and all of them find find that story uh, very interesting. So during at, at the same day, Nisar uh, asked me to deliver a talk on Feynman and uh, his science, his uh, his his way of doing science, and about his uh, about his life. So he asked me to deliver a talk on on Feynman. So I thought uh, I just have to. Uh, tell the things which I was telling them in my room. The difference would be that I have to stand in front of a podium. So I said, of course, I will give a talk. So that was the moment when uh, I decided to give the talk, this talk which I am uh, going to give uh, today. So this was the story, and uh, we I give I gave the talk on uh, uh, probably one year ago, and uh, it was not a big audience we have we had like seven or six people one of which uh, was Nisar himself and uh, he also gave a wonderful talk uh, which uh, which was uh, uh, called uh, the uh, celestial astronomy and why it should matter to me so this was the title of the research talk and it was also uh, I learned a lot of things from him uh, from his talk and it was really wonderful so that was the uh, story of this talk and this talk uh, is really a pioneer moment for me in the Guwahati because it uh, it makes me believe that I can explain my ideas to other people and they they will listen and they will understand so this talk is really an important uh, a milestone in my journey in Guwahati so this uh, is a sort of introduction or a story about this talk and uh, and uh, this is it so uh, let me now go on to the, the real topic which is the pleasure of finding things out science and life of finding now the first question that, uh, that 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 comes to mind is that comes to mind is why Feynman why I'm talking about Feynman and not uh, not some other scientist this, the reason for this answer, the, the answer to this question is little personal. Uh, I have looked at the life 
of uh, a various scientists, uh, for example, Feynman, Oppenheimer, uh, Einstein, Niels Bohr, uh, and the people, these people that I'm telling, uh, Feynman as a scientist and Feynman as a person. So I have looked at the, uh, the, the, the science scientist perspective of all the scientists, the science perspective, and and as as what kind of people they were. And I found that uh, Feynman, on the other hand, the way of doing science of Feynman and the, the Feynman that what kind of character he was, it's really an inspiration for me. So it's the, the reason that why I'm talking about Feynman today and not uh, about anybody else is a little personal. And you will get to know what uh, this personal thing at, uh, at the end of this talk. So this uh, is uh, the real uh, content why I've chosen Feynman. Now, the, f the first thing that, uh, the, that comes into mind is who is Richard Feynman? So let me uh, go on and tell you who was Richard Feynman. So Richard Feynman was, uh, uh, he was an American and he was a, he was a theoretical physicist. I am assuming that all of you know what theoretical physicists mean. Uh, so, for giving to give to uh, to make you familiar with what he did, let me tell you one of one or two of his uh, works. So he uh, did some work in uh, integral formulation of quantum mechanics. Actually, he introduced the idea of in, uh, the in path integral formulation of quantum mechanics, which is not generally being taught in the universities because it's a little hectic and uh, it's a little uh, a different approach towards the quantum mechanics, towards the postulates of quantum, you know, quantum mechanics. And, and that's why lots of people are not familiar with this uh, path integral formulation. He also worked in the, uh, in the, in the, in, in the theory of quantum electro electrodynamics, which is precisely the most accurate physical theory which was ever invented. The uh, quantum electrodynamics is just the uh, pioneer of the physics. He also worked in something called Parton model, and uh, and to give you the uh, the triumph of his work, let me tell you that he shared the Nobel Prize in 1965 with uh, Shimini Temenago and Julian Schwinger uh, for his work on quantum dynamics. So these three people got uh, they shared the Nobel Prize for 1965. This is what Feynman was as a scientist. So he was a credible scientist he was not a credible scientist he was extraordinary scientist but today i'm not want i don't want to talk, tell you about feynman as a scientist i want to tell you about feynman as a teacher and as a human being so let me introduce to you feynman as a human being so uh, and let me start by telling uh, about uh, as a chronologically about his life so let me go on and tell me uh, where he, he was born and and where he studied and what kind of things he encountered in his life so this was the place where Feynman uh, born he uh, he was born in uh, Queens which uh, is a is, is a place in New York uh, and uh, this uh, as you can see in your screen this is the home where he was born in far Rockway and uh, and this guy which you are seeing in your screen, uh, screen, Melville Feynman. This guy was the father of Richard Feynman. Now, this guy has an interesting, uh, uh, interesting part in our uh, discussion because this is the guy who made Feynman what he was. He, this guy, uh, he was not a scientist. Melville Feynman was not a scientist. He never went to any college or any uh, school he did have some schooling but uh, the thing that melville feynman has is he has incredible skepticism he taught feynman very early that you should not accept the things you should question the things you should not uh, be conformative you should not accept the authority and you should question whatever comes in front of you. So this was the role that Fein Melville Feynman gave to Richard Feynman in very early years of his life. So now his relationship with his father, he uh, Feynman himself had uh, told in many uh, uh, occasions about 
uh, relationship with his father and how his father influenced uh, him in his uh, journey of becoming a scientist but uh, to give you an idea of how his father influenced him let me tell you a story about Feynman and his father about this bird which you are seeing on your screen so just to make sure uh, that all of you are following me let me ask you uh, is this okay or uh, are you guys able to see uh, what is uh, i'm presenting i am presenting on the screen yes okay so uh, so this is the story of Feynman and his father they were uh, walking along a road in one uh, one day and uh, his father asked him uh, uh, Feynman, uh, can you see this bird? And Feynman said yes. And his father said, "Do you name? Do you know the name of this bird?" And he said, "I don't know." Feynman said, "I don't know." His father said, "The name of this bird in English language is sparrow." So the bird that Feynman was seeing was sparrow. Then his father said, "In Portuguese, the name of the bird is something else. You can call it." Uh, whatever you like. So the name of this bird is different in Portuguese and it is different in Japanese and it is different in Chinese. So his father said the name of this bird is different in all the languages and if you know the name of the bird in all the languages you know absolutely nothing about the bird. So what father what his father taught him at that day is knowing name of something is not actually knowing something and let me tell you uh, uh, in his own words what he said so as you can see on the right side of the screen uh, i have written here in the quotations so a uh, fine said uh, fine father said you can know the name of a bird in all the languages of the world but when you are finished you will know absolutely nothing whatever about the bird so to know about the bird let's look at the bird and see what is doing what and that's what counts so the thing that counts about that bird is how big the bird is uh, how big his mouth how many uh, color that bird has so that at that moment Feynman father taught Feynman that knowing something knowing the name of something is not actually knowing something and that was really an important phase or an important milestone in the life of Feynman and this was a very popular story every Feynman fan knows this story this story of bird and the Feynman now let me tell you another story so one day Feynman and uh, his, uh, his and his father they were studying this encyclopedia I know all, uh, all of you are, um, are familiar with this uh, Encyclopedia Britannica. It's a, it's a dictionary which uh, is like a Wikipedia. So, you know, you go on Wikipedia and you search about the things and you will get, you get the result. This, this, at the old times, they don't have internet, so they use this, uh, uh, this, uh, this, this dictionary. So they were, uh, Feynman and uh, his father, they were uh, sitting in a room and they were studying this uh, dictionary. And suddenly Feynman's father started talking about dinosaurs. So Feynman's father said that in the past, there were a key creature uh, called dinosaur and they were 25 feet big and, their, and their, their, head, and their head was six feet across. So they were very big creature. So, and, and after uh, the moment he said about the dimensions of the uh, dinosaur, at the next moment he said, you know what, what it means to be uh, 25 feet high and six feet uh, 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 and, and, and having a, a head of six feet? He said, if this dinosaur stands uh, in front of our house, he would be so big that his uh, head would reach at the top of our house. So this is what meant to be a 25 feet high dinosaur and, and having a 6 feet uh, big uh, head means that you will not be able to put your head through the window of, uh, through, through the window of the, uh, through the window of the room. So this is the meaning of uh, having this big dimension and that 
this really hooked Feynman that uh, the the dimensions of uh, of the dinosaur can be correlated with something which is in the physical world. And uh, the moment uh, he explained, after that he said, all that, all the all the creatures, all the creatures which were named by the dinosaur, they all died, and nobody knew why they died at that time. So that really find that this also hooked Feynman about the process that it's it's not matter how many facts you know, but what matters is how you can correlate those facts with the actual world. So as uh, in the words of Feynman, uh, he said, my father translate everything for me and I learned to translate, which uh, this uh, dinosaur story is the uh, is an example. And so I have the same disease. When I read something, I always translate it in the best I can into what does it really mean. So this was also a very big influence on the way how Feynman did his science. Now, uh, let me go on and tell you uh, uh, another story. So one day Feynman and his father was visiting museum in New York and Feynman's father showed him some uh, uh, rock. As you can see, those rock in this, uh, in this picture, little here, little picture. And his father said, you know, uh, these rocks, they have cuts on their edges, they have uh, edges on their uh, on their surfaces and uh, the Feynman said Feynman father said do you know these edges these edges is being made by rubbing these uh, rocks against each other and they are being uh, rubbed against each other uh, when they were present in a glacier and uh, what happened is uh, that uh, one glacier being uh, rubbed against the another glacier and that rubbing created these uh, these cuts on these rocks and then he said do you know these rocks were found in the new york therefore there must have been glacier in the new york in past so this was also a very uh, uh, interesting story and that also uh, Tell, told Feynman that the fact is not the is not the is not the principal interest, but what is the principal interest is how you connect those facts and how you get at a conclusion, and which is in this case is the conclusion that there were uh, glaciers in the past in New York. So this was also an all uh, this is also an interesting story which uh, Feynman told himself in one interview. And this is uh, the picture. Now, uh, this is the final word that I want uh, all of you can all of you to appreciate that Feynman told on his father that the thing that is very important to my father is not the fact, but the process, how we find out what is the consequence of finding such a rock. And uh, he never successfully went to college but he read a lot like those things and like those things which can be understood by thinking. And uh, he said, Feynman said, it's not very hard to understand why I got interested in science. So science and Feynman, the, the why Feynman got into science, you can, uh, this that the credit goes to his father. So this was the relationship of uh, Feynman with his father. If you want to learn, or if you want to know more about how Feynman, uh, how his father influenced Feynman, you can go and look at the uh, personal uh, uh, biography of Feynman. Uh, it's not a biography; it's a, it's a it's a book on the anecdotes of Feynman, which goes with the name of uh, "Surely You Are Joking with Feynman." You can read it; it's a really interesting book. I would highly recommend. Now let's go on and uh, learn about some. Uh, things that Feynman uh, did in his uh, early life. So as you can see in your screen, this is a notebook. This is a part of the no notebook of the Feynman, which he uh, created uh, when he was in high school. So as you can see, uh, in high school, he was uh, started learning this uh, expansion of series and, uh, and all these things, which uh, are not being taught at the high school level. So Feynman, uh, taught uh, these things to himself before being taught in the classroom. So actually, he was a self-taught uh, kind of a guy. 
now uh, his education so let me tell you a few words about where he uh, went to school so he attended a, a, a high school in far rockway queens and after that he went to uh, massachusetts institute of technology to get a degree in physics uh, he applied at uh, he i also applied at uh, columbia university but he was not accepted because he was a jew so the prejudicial things uh, came into picture and he was not accepted by the columbia university uh, so in his early work in his uh, days at um, mit he worked with uh, helman and uh, they published a result which goes with the name of helman feynman theorem this is uh, yeah uh, this is uh, this work is being done on the uh, structure of the molecules and how they interact with each other now uh, uh, after finishing his undergraduate work uh, he applied to princeton university and uh, uh, he pursued his uh, uh, phd there and uh, uh, <clears throat> at the at princeton and also at mit he did very well uh, in mathematics and in physics but did poorly in uh, the humanities and all the other uh, the courses which is a little different from the uh, the interest of feynman now uh, so let me tell you a little about a little things about his phd work so uh, he got his phd in 1942 under the uh, scientist or under the advisor uh, john wheeler which uh, may of you uh, which some of you uh, probably heard Uh, John Wheeler was the person who coined the term uh, black hole. So he was the person. He also uh, worked on uh, lots of uh, areas. But with Feynman, they worked on the uh, the uh, quantum mechanics and the uh, the work of Feynman, which led to his PhD, was the uh, the principle of least action in quantum mechanics, and uh, also the path working. Uh, a ground break a ground breaking work of feynman diagrams uh, he or he actually uh, worked all of his uh, big ideas in 1942 but he did not um, made it to the ultimate level uh, but the the starting of his uh, nobel prize winning work was already be, already being done in 1942 now after finishing his phd he uh, one of his friend uh, asked him to join the manhattan project the project which uh, led to the creation of atomic bomb and uh, feynman said okay and uh, he he said he thought uh, that uh, he is a credible scientist he can help his uh, nation to win the war so he joined the manhattan project and he worked under the famous scientist famous nuclear physicist hans bethe and uh, uh, hans bethe got very impressed by the feynman and uh, his way of doing science so he made him a group leader and uh, uh, feynman uh, made quite a quite an impression during the those during the during the days of manhattan project now let me again uh, chronologically tell you what uh, uh, was the most important work of feynman so i have already tell, told you that uh, a uh, feynman uh, did some work on feynman helen Hel helen theorem he also did did uh, the work on path integral formulation qed and the feynman diagram but there are all there are some other works which uh, which feynman also did and uh, the one of that work is the uh, the behavior of superfluid helium so at the time uh, people were interested in how uh, helium behaves superfluid uh, supercooled helium behaves so uh, and uh, the behavior of the supercooled helium were, uh, was quite strange and people was not able to figure out how they behave mathematically and uh, feynman was the person who actually worked out the theory and uh, explained how superfluid helium behaves at the uh, at the uh, very cool uh, very uh, small temperatures now this is the uh, slide to make you uh, see how the how feynman uh, got his idea so uh, at the time uh, let me go on and uh, tell you about this so this quantum theory which was being uh, uh, put uh, into the into the context by uh, paul dirac and uh, heisenberg niels bohr and other scientists that theory has a little bit of a problem 
and the problem was in the calculation of the uh, many of you are familiar with this g factor so uh, are you guys uh, familiar with this g factor which we learn in the uh, the spin theory of quantum um, uh, the spin theory of electrons are you guys familiar with this g factor yes uh, we are little bit familiar with that yes so that the problem with that that g factor is uh, if uh, they they used the uh, when they used the dirac uh, theory of uh, electrons to to calculate the value of g factor on paper the answer was a little different than the that the answer that they were getting experimentally now the problem was to get the answer uh, as closer to the theory as as they can so they started to calculating the answer uh, very precisely and when they did to uh, when they did to uh, calculate the value of g precisely by using the uh, uh, dirac theory of electrons they got infinities so this is a bad thing your physical theory should not give you answers in infinity because infinity is not an answer so this and this problem was being uh, uh, created in 1927 and uh, it took long time people to actually got to get a breakthrough and the first breakthrough was being uh, uh, proposed by feynman and how he got his idea about the uh, the theory of electrons one day uh as you can see in this slide uh feynman was sitting in a cafeteria and one guy is uh, 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 uh throwing a plate in the sky a spinning plate in the sky and there was a little logo on that place which uh, uh which uh, is bubbling when the uh, when the plate is being spinning when the plate is spinning and the the sign on that plate is rotating and it's also bobbling so feynman looked at the plate and he thought uh, this uh, little uh, sign or this little uh, logo on that plate could be thought of as an electron <coughs> and then he started uh, doing this calculation and he he was not doing anything formally he was just playing with the with the ideas and then somehow he got the intuition and that intuition led to the uh, the development of the quantum electrodynamics his version of quantum electrodynamics there were th there is three versions of quantum electrodynamics one of the feynman one of julian swinger and one of the tomonaga and all three versions are different and the most simplest one is the version of feynman and then in then the uh, the motivation of feynman's work was uh, was this uh, this accident now uh, this uh, as i have written here inspired by the spinning plate feynman realized that the fact that the equation resulted in infinities didn't mean they are wrong they just need to be looked from a different perspective and that what feynman did so and uh, again then he saw that there is actually pictorial way to represent these equation the equation of uh, dirac and he associate a little cartoon to each term in the equation which we now call feynman diagram so actually feynman uh, what feynman did is feynman uh, used uh, a little pictures to represent the big terms in the equation and that picture is actually a pictorial way to represent the equations and uh, let me tell you those helps a lot because qed is a very uh, mathematical subject and but the feynman's approach of qed is way way simpler than the swinger or the tomonaga now the feynman got so much uh, uh, captivated by his uh, diagrams that uh, he result the result was that he uh, pictured all of his diagrams onto his van so as you can see this is the van uh, feynman used Uh, for for uh, traveling and as you can see uh, the diagrams is being painted on this van so as you uh, can 
uh, get uh, you can get uh, you can see what kind of uh, person he was so there was a there is a scientist um, who is still alive his name is uh, i can't actually recall what his name uh, yeah so that his name was dyson so Fa freeman dyson said that feynman uh, is a half genius half buffoon so uh, this can give you the idea of what kind of personality feynman was so he was half genius and half buffoon and the example is this car now feynman not only did science but he also he was also very much interested in the music and arts so as you can see in these two pictures in the left he was holding a he is holding a bongo and he was wearing this uh, stupid look stupid looking t-shirt stupid looking a uh, short and the his this picture is uh, uh, when he was going to play in a, an orchestra and in the second picture you can see he was uh, uh, he was painting his painting and uh, these two uh, were also uh, uh, interest of feynman so science is not the only interest he also he was also interested in uh, bongo playing and this painting now uh, now let me go on and tell you the feynman style of doing science so how feynman did the science i mean from the earlier example you should have got some ideas how feynman did uh, his science and how he approached these uh, the problems but uh, let me tell you some other examples to make you concretely see uh, how feynman uh, did uh, science in in his life so uh, his scientific style was to look for the simplest most elementary solution of the problem that was possible now there was many scientists who like to make things complicated feynman was not one of them feynman was the guy who like to present or who like to solve problems into most elementary way that it is possible so that was feynman now for a, for an example we can uh, take the example of qed so uh, julian swinger the formulation of quantum electrodynamics by julian swinger contains very rigorous mathematics and if you give the swingers uh, uh, julian swingers quantum electrodynamics to read to an average student he will not be able to read it it contains integrals which is like two pages long but uh, feynman was not the guy he was the guy who found out the way to represent those equation into pictorial terms so this is also an example how feynman uh, 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 got his uh, uh, once again he got his uh, 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 view to found out a simplest solution of the quantum dynamics now he truly believed that if you could not explain something simply you didn't understand it this sentence is being repeated by many scientists albert einstein also said if you cannot explain it simply you don't understand it well enough and feynman once more he also believed that understanding is a big thing explaining is a big thing uh, when it comes to understanding now uh, his way of doing science he his way of simplifying uh, uh, problems uh, can be uh, highlighted by looking at these two examples so let me tell you about the uh, about the problem of superfluid helium and the electron proton collision so <clears throat> this was the famous problem uh, which troubled scientists for ages and the problem was the problem of superfluid helium scientists were trying to find out how these helium atoms behave when they they when they जब हम उनको बहुत ठंडा कर देते हैं हाउ दे बिहेव सो एंड रियली स्ट्रगल टू फाइंड आउट टू टू बिहेवियर ऑफ सुपर फ्लूड हेलियम नाउ देर वॉज अ थियरी बाय बाई अम लैंड आउट एंड द फेमस रशियन फिजिसिस्ट एंड हिज थियरी कंटेन्स कॉम्प्लीकेटेड इंटेग्रल्स लॉर्ड्स ऑफ एजम्स इट वर्क इट वर्क बट इट वर्क फॉर a certain region of temperatures and if you go below that temperature his theory failed then came feynman and he wrote down the simplest thing that you can write down for the wave function of the helium 
and his uh, solution as you can see i have written in the uh, uh, in the at the below of this uh, slide and his solution was that uh, at a certain distance the wave function of this uh, helium atom collapses and the wave function becomes zero so there is a finite probability till till certain distance that these helium atoms can come and after that distance the helium atom cannot come uh, further towards each other and this was the solution this was the intuition and this explained almost everything that was known about super fluid fluid helium at that time this simple uh, assumption this simple uh, uh, the equation about the wave function of helium atom explained everything so and this was being proposed by the feynman in 1960s probably probably now one example is the uh, collision of electron and proton so at the at the scattering ex ex scattering experiment uh, people have uh, figured out that a uh, proton have structure it has internal structure it is not an in it is not an elementary particle so they were trying to find out the uh a, the result of uh, electron and proton collision so what uh, they were they, what they were trying to find out is what happened when uh, a proton and and one electron being shot uh, towards each other now if a proton have structure means if proton have different parts then during the collision you will have to account how the different parts of proton interacts with each other inside the proton so and at this and this uh, uh, the calculation of this interaction is not very simple it took a very uh, very very long time uh, for people to figure out and they were they were they were not able to figure out figure it out what feynman did is this he said that what if we shoot a proton towards an electron because that proton is moving very fast and since the proton is moving very fast all the different parts of proton is also moving very fast then because they are moving very fast we can use special relativity and we can assume that the different parts of the proton uh is experiencing time dilation and by the effect of time dilation the time for interaction for the different parts of a uh, uh, proton is not very much so the the by using the special relativity we can we can eliminate the interaction of proton and we can only focus only focus on the uh, interaction of electron with the different parts of proton so by using the special relativity we can completely eliminate the interaction of uh, the different parts of proton inside the proton and this really helps this really helped that time and uh, when uh, and different parts of proton uh, feynman said that different parts of proton can be said uh, and can be coined with a with a name which feynman named the partons so basically feynman said that uh, protons uh, is made out of partons the they are the uh, uh, constituent particles which are uh, made of the protons now so this is the two examples uh, which uh, uh, this is the two problems which uh, will uh, uh, highlight uh, how feynman approached science and how he uh, 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 proposed most elementary solution to the prob problem i mean the list go on forever i am in the list there are lots of examples but by the restriction of time i will not be able to show you but uh, these two uh, could have uh, uh, gave you the impression uh, how feynman uh, approached the subject now uh, <clears throat> uh, for the for the conclusion uh, what i want to tell you is what we can learn from feynman's life so the thing that i have uh, learned or i have uh, uh, incorporated in my life is uh, there is no right answer to any question we have only approximate answers and uh, what this means is that because we have approximate answer we should be 
uh, open to the possibilities of being wrong. So this is what Feynman did. He was very honest guy throughout his life. He did not claim that his uh, uh, his theory of uh, quantum electrodynamics is a perfect one. He said uh, it, it is possible that someday one guy could come and he can uh, he can uh, prove my theory uh, uh, wrong. So he was quite open about uh, about being uh, wrong. So this is what we should learn from the Feynman that uh, being wrong is not something bad. It is the thing which opens up the door of learning. So this is uh, what we should learn from the Feynman's life. And uh, with this, I would like to conclude uh, my talk.